question. Certain circumstances right. of things I could not understand. Yes. In many times and trials, you know, weakness blurred my vision. That's when my frustration seemed to get so high. And don't 
Bible has a whole lot to say on the subject of waiting. Uh -huh. oh, and that's the one place we hate. Yes. Yes. We are governed to want it right now. Yes. It's the truth. Yes. Don't make me wait. My Lord. Amen. I hate to wait in the line. Oh, yes. Ain't gonna need a lot. I pull up McDonald's or wherever I want to hurry up. Amen. And don't make me have to tell you three times what I ordered. Yes. It don't never fail. Let me be preaching. And they'll say, what'd you say, sir? Oh, yes. I'm not offended with the sir part. As I am offended with the fact that they don't, can't hurry up and get it together. So we are geared not to want to wait. Amen. You know, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> the Bible says Joseph waited three years in prison before God vindicated him. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, uh, before God came to his rescue and set him free, he had to sit there three years. I, I don't know about you, but I don't like that waiting thing. Uh, Moses had to wait 80 years before he could be the deliverer that God could use. Uh, Hallelujah. David waited from the time he was a teenager uh, until he was in his 30s uh, yeah. to become the king. Uh, yeah. God gave him a promise, you're going to be the king. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, waiting for things to come to pass, uh, waiting for prophecies, waiting for promises, uh, waiting for whatever, uh, we get weary in the waiting. Uh, and we wonder, has the Lord forgotten us? Uh, has he forgotten the promise he made? Has he forgotten uh, that we're
I think I got saved in the revival myself. <laughs> Y'all can't understand that, but you know, sometimes along the journey you feel like, what in the world? What in yeah, the world? Yeah, but I'm going to tell you what, I know what the world, there are places in your life that, that you have to just keep doing what you know to do right. until you get an infusion. Amen. Uh, Some of y'all need a B12 Holy Ghost infusion. B12 is an energy type shock. And when your energy's low and stuff in your body ain't just right, they'll, they'll pop a B12 in you. And after you get that little shot, you're going to feel like a brand new person all over again. When well, you see, that's what the Holy Ghost does for the believer. The Holy Ghost is the B12. 12 is a number for government and order. And B, he said, I want you to pretend. I want you to be. I want you to be the believer. I want you to be the the church. I want you to be what I've ordained you to be. So quit trying to do anything else. Just be. And let me hook the 12 to you. And when you get that B12, you're going to feel like a hallelujah all over again. I think we all need to get saved all over again. And let the joy of the Lord become our strength. Let the joy of the Lord become our peace. Let the joy So the Bible says better is the end of the thing than the beginning. Well, I went in Sunday school, but uh, the Lord is in Sunday school. So I didn't wait. To, Sunday school was being taught to fix the sermon. So Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. That means when you have to wait on something, if you're not careful, it'll make you sick. Uh -huh. I'm talking to you. All right. And so, but it says when you get that thing that you're waiting for, it's like a tree of life. Yeah. You're like, I believe I can live again. Right. <laughs> I believe I can get up from here again. And I believe yeah. I can let God get the glory. Hallelujah. You, you might be thinking this morning, uh, uh, well, I believe this message is for me. It is. All right. You might be thinking this morning, today's not a good day, Pastor. Uh, things have not gone well this week. And I've been waiting and waiting for something to change. Uh, but it hasn't changed. Uh, and I, I pray, uh, and there don't seem to be no answer coming. Can I talk to you today? Uh, hallelujah. The Bible says you pray without ceasing. Uh, it don't say that you get to quit uh, just because you didn't get an answer. Uh, he said, I called upon the Lord, uh, and he heard my cry. Hallelujah, and he delivered me from out of uh, whatever the out of was. So, you know, if, if you feel like that you've been praying and you ain't got no answer, you need to understand you're not alone. Everybody in this room has felt that way at one time or another. But I've come to remind you that the word of God is true. And it will come to pass. If it's in the book, you can count on it. Hallelujah. If he's, if he's promised us a better day, we're going to have one. <laughs> better, better day's coming. That's what he told me to preach. A better day is coming. You might have cried this morning, but you ain't going to cry always. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I can't, I want to preach today. I can't help it. So you need to understand that if he's promised me a better day, that means I'm going to have a better day. Better day is a coming. So you know, while while the time passes, while I'm waiting, he doesn't waste that time. He uses that my, that time to mold me and shape me like I need to be. Uh, so when my better day comes, my attitude will be right, uh, and my gratitude will be right, uh, and my altitude will be right, uh, because my gratitude will determine my my attitude determines gratitude, uh, and my gratitude will determine my altitude. Uh, that means how high I can go. Uh, hallelujah! So if you've got a 
thankful heart in the good times and the bad. You can soar like an eagle. eagle. If you've got a thankful heart, in spite of what you're going through, you can rise from where you are, even in the dust, even in the stuff that you don't know what to do or how to do. Make your mind up, I will be thankful no matter what. I'll thank you when I got money and when I ain't got money. I'll thank you when everything's good and when everything ain't good. I'm just going to thank him because he's working on me to develop me like I need to be. Yes, he is. Y'all ready? Amen. Okay, you know, th this just, I don't know, I looked at how you develop a negative because it was just in my heart. And you know, they cannot develop a negative without going in the dark room. A negative is a picture of something. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So you take the picture, God has the picture, and in order for him to develop us, we got to go in the dark room. Uh -huh. All right. None of us like the dark room. No, no, because you go, you know, we just don't like the dark room. So then they place the film in a solution. I looked it up, and it's called a developing tank. Great. Not only am I in a dark room, but now I'm in a tank. Come on here. So you have, and then they tell you, be careful not let no light seep in, because if the light comes in too early, uh, it'll mess up the negative. So you see, uh, and then they got a pre-wash, a uh, pre-soak. So now they got to soak me while I'm in the dark room. Uh, and then after a while, they're going to pour some cold water on you. <laughs> well, some of y'all feel like y'all already had the cold water poured on you. <laughs> You just wonder, Lord, I don't understand. Uh, so when they pour the cold water over the film, uh, then the next thing you got to do is check the temperature. Uh, well, I believe the Holy Ghost is checking our temperature this morning. Uh, and I believe he's seeing how far along uh, we have come. Uh, and are we ready to be developed? Uh, are we ready for the world to see uh, Christ formed in us? Hallelujah! Good God Almighty. Uh, and then you see, uh, then they pour all, all of our developer, and then they got more developer, they pour that in. Jesus. And then they lift the tank and tap it firmly. They hit it a few times. Uh, have you ever felt like you was already in the bottom and you still got knocked around a few more times? Uh, well, you were in the dark room of life, uh, and the Holy Ghost went in there with you. Uh, it's His hands that are holding you, uh, and it's His hands that are taking care of you. Uh, and even though you don't like where you are, uh, even though like how it feels. Uh, now all of a sudden, tap, 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 tap. Uh, they say if you don't tap it, uh, it'll form bubbles, uh, and then it won't be able to be developed. Uh, and I believe we have to be tapped a few times uh, to see what's still left in us. Uh, that's not like God. Uh, but ain't it good to know uh, he's got a process, uh, and when he taps you a few times, uh, he can get rid of all that stuff that ain't like him, uh, and you can come out of that dark room. Uh, he can hang you up uh, So once the bubbles are gone, then you think you finished? No. Now they got to put something else on you. It's called a stop bath solution. So now they did put a developer on, and now they want to stop the developer. Oh. Uh -oh. Then you got to pour something else called a fixer into the tank. And that's what the Spirit of God does. He's called a fixer. He will fix you where you think you cannot be fixed. And then, after you've already been through the, all the different solutions and those tanks, uh, he said, now the only thing left is a final wash. That means you thought you were about finished, but not quite. Uh, he said, I'm going to wash you one more time. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I didn't leave no debris in you. Uh, and then the last thing that happens, he hangs the film up to let it dry. Uh, aren't you glad to know uh, that you're not going to stay in the dark room? Uh, isn't it good to know you're not going to be sitting in solution? all your life. Uh, that means troubles and situations and circumstances. Uh, oh, I wish to God somebody understood what I was trying to say. Uh, there's some of you who've been in the dark room for quite a season uh, and you're wondering, are you ever going to come out? Uh, I heard the Lord say, tell my people, uh, better days are coming. Uh, you're not going to cry always. Uh, you're not going to hurt always. Uh, you're not going to feel disappointed always. Uh, you're not going to uh, because he He's going to hang you up to the ground. Yeah. 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 
is better than life. Uh, my lips shall praise thee. Oh, yeah. You've been good to oh, me. Yeah. Uh, even though you've not yet answered what I've been oh, yeah. asking for. Uh, oh, yeah. Even though you've not come through yet. Uh, I choose my lips are going to praise you. Uh, hallelujah. You said better days are coming. Uh, and because I believe what you said. Uh, hallelujah. Praise uh, is the language of faith. Uh, and I'm going to bless you. Uh, I'm going to thank you in advance for my miracle. Uh, Sometimes you face things you feel like they're permanent and they're never going to change. Amen. You, ever, you ever had one of them? Yeah. And it's really easy to think, well, it's always going to be this way. And after a while, we kind of settle like it's not going to change. But you know, just because it seems permanent yeah. doesn't make it permanent. Amen. Amen. That's true. Amen. I'm trying to stir up somebody's faith today. That's all right. All right. Thank you, God. See, what I love about the Lord is he had the solution before he, I had the problem. He had the solution before he carried me in the dark room. Amen. He already had the fixer already ready. He had the developer already ready. He knew everything I would need to be able to come out and be all right. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. Well, can I tell you what the Lord said for me to tell y'all that's in here hurting this morning? Because I know you're here. You, you got your precious Jesus face on, and you're trying to look like everything is great. Oh. But I know what the Lord said. He said, tell my people, it is not permanent. It's only temporary. So that lets me know that whatever we're weathering, it did not come to stay. But it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe we're coming out. Hallelujah. Coming out of whatever's holding us captive. Whether it's sickness, whether it's finances, it don't matter what it is. You can call it whatever you want to. But the Lord said to tell my people better days are coming. He said, Pastor, don't you see the news? Sure, I see the news. But I watched it about two seconds and turned it off. Because the news is depressing. And if you're not careful, it'll steal your faith. It'll make you feel like there ain't no hope. And everything in the world is just in a mess. It might be in a mess. But the Bible says the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. So if the Bible says the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. So I believe that word. And if I believe that word, that means better days are coming. Hallelujah. You ain't got to wait you die go to heaven to have a better day. He said, I'll make you to sit in heavenly places. While you're living right here, he'll elevate you to a new dimension and he'll help you to understand I got better for you. Anybody want better? Anybody want better? Some of you overlooked on your job and ain't being paid what's right. You need to say better's coming for me. He said, Preacher Kavanaugh, have you lost your brain? No, can I tell you something else? Huh? The Lord said, I'm already planning your coming out party. God said, I'm already planning your coming out party. We ain't coming out of the clothes. It's like that junk's all over everywhere. Right. We're coming out of the stuff that has held us captive and, oh, and the wounds and the disappointments and whatever else. Uh, we are coming out uh, because the Lord said he was planning the coming yeah. out party. Yeah. That means there's a set time. Oh, Sister Emma, you can't stay for a while. There's a set time. Uh, God said, I'm planning your coming out party. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wish somebody could have faith come alive enough to believe uh, that a party's got your name on it. Uh, that God said, I'm going to plan the party. Uh, Try not to preach as long as I did in revival. <laughs> I had a lot of something, I don't know. 
God just was in me and it's still in me this morning. Praying. I'm going to preach it anyhow. So the Bible says that God is the Alpha and the Omega. He said better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Well, he's alpha, that means the beginning, yeah. and omega yeah. is the end. Yeah. So wherever I fall out in between there, he's got me there too. Come on, yeah. you need to hear me. Hallelujah. He sees he's already set an end. Yeah. I'm going to just go ahead and tell you what he told me. I got it wrote down. He said, I've already set an end to that addiction that your children are held with. He said, I already set an end to the sickness. I've already set an end to those things that are keep stealing from you. Oh, uh, hallelujah. And you'll say to me, uh, but you don't understand. Yes, I do understand. I, I had a boy uh, hooked up on crack and cocaine. I know what it does to you. But let me tell you, the Lord set a date for the end. Uh, uh, he had a coming out party. Oh, yes, he did. Uh, glory to God. Uh, and I can just use him because I know for a fact. Uh, but I can tell you, no matter what it's called, uh, the Lord said, I'm going to bring you out of it. And you're wondering when will this ever get over? The Lord said, I have already set the date and the time. And it will. There is the end of the thing and the beginning. If I could tell you right now that your answer would be on 922. Today's 15th, right? Okay, 922 was the final day that you'd ever deal with that thing. You wouldn't be discouraged, would you? It because you'd have a hallelujah when, when, when you're struggling to have one right now. Can I talk to you? So you see, the Lord wants you to believe him before you receive it. The Lord wants you to praise him before you get it. See, he said, you need to act like it's going to happen, like you really do believe it's really going to happen. Uh, you see, that's what faith is all about, believing uh, before you experience it or before you receive it. Uh, some may ask, uh, well, you know, or they might say, well, you don't understand. I'm still dealing with it, Ann. My Lord. <laughs> Ann? My Lord. I'm going to tell you the truth. When, when my air conditioner went out in July... The air conditioner worked about three years old. So in my mindset, there was no way in God's human, in my human thinking that God had given me that that air conditioner should blow up at three years old. And then my next side said to me, there should be a warranty with it. Right. Three years old, sure. Uh -huh. Well, the, the people that made it said every part of that unit was warranted except that one piece that messed up. <laughs> well, you know, that's why you can't put your trust in man. Amen. Can I talk about it? Amen. Jesus, our God, made us all. And he's got a guarantee on every last part of us and every everything that puts us together. Uh, he said, my hand is on you and I'm holding you uh, and I'm going to take care of you. Uh, he said, better is the end going to be than the beginning. And most people think, well, I just got to go to heaven for it to be better. No, you do not. Uh, he wants you to have joy here, peace here. Uh, he wants you to live uh, abundantly blessed. Hallelujah. And if I can get you to believe that uh, and to get you, get you to praise that, praise God like you believe that's the truth, uh, you're going to say, wait a minute here. It's party time where I'm at. Amen. Amen. Psalms 118 and 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Amen. I'm telling you, man can mess you up. And even after they came, finally after a whole month and put the new piece on the air conditioner, it didn't work for about five days and it quit again. Oh so now I'm about to have a real human fleshly moment. Don't ask me. Don't even ask me. I didn't, but I wanted to. I just didn't yield to it. But Exodus 23 and 26 says the number of my days will full, he will fulfill. Yes, so that yes. lets me know uh, the number of whatever he's laid down for me, he's going to bring it to pass. Yes, yes. And I still believe uh, that is only temporary. Glory to Thank God. You. God is opening doors uh, that no man yes, can yes. shut. Yes. 
And he's going to put the right people in the lives of our children that's going to turn them back to where they need to be. Hallelujah. Don't let your thinking become, well, it's just permanent. My son and my daughter ain't never going to serve the Lord. I beg to differ with you. He said, better is the end than the beginning. It might be hard right now. You may not understand right now. But he made you a promise that better things are coming. So, Zechariah 9, 12, turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. He said, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. But you've got to be a prisoner of hope. Hope deferred. Don't let your hope go. Because when you live without hope, you are miserable. Amen. If you never hope it'll get better, you never hope things will change, you are miserable. But the Bible says you prisoners of hope. That means I'm chained to my hope. I'm not going to let nothing separate me from my hope. Hallelujah, I'm in a stop with my hope. I'm a prisoner of hope. Hallelujah, and I'm holding on to what God has promised. I might look like I'm dragging a chain or a shackle, but it's the right kind because it's connected to my hope in God. Hallelujah. He said, and then I'll render double for thee. I'm going to give you double because you didn't let nothing take your hope away. And you kept your hope in me. Hallelujah. He said, turn you to the stronghold. Who is the stronghold? Jesus Christ. Don't lose your hope. Jeez. Hebrews 6, 19 says, Which hope we have is an anchor of the soul, and it's sure and steadfast. It says, My hope will anchor me. Some of y'all need that. Amen. I'm going to preach a few more minutes. Psalms 84 and 6, Who passeth through the valley of Baca, which means the valley of weeping, you'll make it a well. The rain also feeleth. It means it enwraps the pools. And that means he... When you're going through the valley of weeping, that the Spirit of God will wrap you with blessings. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Can I say that again? Yeah. Who passing through the valley of weeping, make it a well. In other words, you've been crying and crying and crying, but the Father is bottling up those tears. He said, I'm making it a well, and the rain will fill. He said, that rain will enwrap you. You know, like you put a, a blanket over you, and you cover yourself up. In wrap the, the fill of the pools uh, and the pools uh, they translate blessings. Good God, he said, "I'm gonna cover you with a blanket like a blessing. It's gonna be like yes. blessings." Uh, and I'm here to tell you, you may have been crying before you come. Uh, you might even cry when you leave. Uh, but weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming. Hallelujah! Better is the end of the thing than the beginning. Psalm 66, 12, thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou brought us out into a wealthy place. That sounds like better to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, I've been through the water and I've been through the fire, but you brought me out to a wealthy place. You brought me out to better. It was better than when I went in. When I came out, I came out better. Lord, have mercy. Y'all know that's what the Lord's trying to tell you. He's saying you're coming out better off than what you were before. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, I learned this. There's a little fish called Moses' soul. And the sharks typically would eat this kind of fish because it's, the kind, it's a small fish. All the other fish that size get eaten. Are you hearing me? It has a unique defense system. It releases poisonous toxins that causes the shark's jaws to freeze. So then when his jaws free, the fish can just swim in and out of his mouth. And they can thank him for about it. They can swim through his mouth. He can't bite them. I'm telling you, the Lord said that as a child of the Most High God, put on something on that shall let you know uh, that your enemy has been defeated. Uh, what, are your what are the poisonous toxins that you can release uh, is your praise. Uh, and your prayer and your praise. Uh, hallelujah. You pray because you believe the Lord hears uh, and you praise because you believe the answers. Uh, hallelujah. So that's the poisonous toxin. Uh, you need to understand that the devil uh, was the praise and worship 
worship leader in heaven. Uh, and hallelujah, when he decided to rear up uh, and thought he would be equal with God, uh, he got thrown out of heaven. Uh, so the one thing he hates the most uh, is people that praise and worship uh, because that's what he used to do. Uh, and he knows he can never go back and do it again. Uh, so we're reminder uh, of what he threw away. Uh, I choose uh, to be a praiser. Uh, I choose uh, to bless the Lord. Mess with anything, deal with my children, whatever I can do more. I pray more, I seek more, whatever I gotta do. I got some toxins and so have you. Look at your neighbor and say, better days. Better days. Better days. All right. Isaiah 54 says, no weapon that's formed against you can prosper. It didn't say it wouldn't form, it just said it couldn't prosper. Right. Come on, think about it. Stuff comes against us. <coughs> but it can't win. All right. It uh -huh. can't prosper. All right. Come on. Mm -hmm. It may form, but God will stop it. Amen. I'm almost done. So what I like to say, there's a scripture in the Bible. I don't have it on my paper, but, it, but David said, my enemies could not finish me off. So in other words, that stuff I've been going through, the devil thinks he's going to finish me off, but he can't finish me off. Because he's just only going to form something, but it can't prosper. Right. And my destiny and my hope and everything else is tied to God and not to what he's doing against me. Uh, Hallelujah. Right. Psalms 84 and 10 says, uh, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. So somebody in this room could get there better this week. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord said, I've set the time, and I don't care who gets it. I just want it to come through. Don't you? I want it to come through. Hallelujah. God's got better plan for you and better plan for me. Hallelujah. And we need to make our mind up. We want the better. It might be rough right now, but, it, you know, it ain't going to stay this way. Amen. So can I, I just want to tell you the words of the song. Sometimes it feels cold and you feel all alone. Oh, yeah. But hold on. Better days are coming. Jesus. It can be rough in this world. I know it ain't easy. Yeah. But hang on in there. I know better days are coming. Thank you. you seem good. You seem bad. You've been hurt beyond sin. But just remember, better days, better days are coming. Friends will leave you all by yourself, but don't cry, because better days are coming. Oh, better days, better days, better days are coming. It's only a season. Hang on in for, for you going through. Yea, but stay focused and never lose sight. I know people, people, they don't see the hurt you feel inside, but keep on smiling, because everything's going to be all right, because better days... I believe whatever the Lord says, I believe it. I just do. And we all have our moments when we wonder, Lord, how much longer? How much more do I have to go through before you change this? How much longer will I see my children living wrong before you save them? How much longer before I have to, how much longer do I have to deal with these things in my body before they change? How much longer, Lord, do I have to watch my family suffer and be sick? How much longer, Lord? He said, yes. I believe the word of the Lord. Amen. I believe this sermon is for everybody in this room. If you'll latch a hold of it. And say, Father, I thank you for what for what you're yet doing for me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We choose this morning.
Lord, to believe your word. We choose this morning to praise you in spite of the trouble and, and the sadness and the sorrow we feel. Father, we thank you, Lord. Sherry, if you will uh, reach in front of you and lay hands on uh, Jaleesa and Sandra, that'd be great. <laughs> 